Hello there, my name is Valo Grettison. I'm editor-in-chief at Reykjavik Grapevine. This here is Polly. She's not happy that she has to be in a lease, but so it goes. We're here at my absolutely favorite place in Iceland. Uh, this is Thingvellir. Uh, a lot of people, of course, visited this place. And when you come to Iceland, everybody just needs to visit here. And you can see now, you can just fall. And I love this, I love this place extra much in the fall because of the, the colors. We don't have that much colors in, in Iceland, but uh, uh, but in the fall you can see like how unique and like dramatic it can be. It's absolutely crazy. You can see the skies there, like almost like touching the the waters, and it's it's it's, it's just breathtakingly beautiful. Uh, but it's also it was in the news this weekend, and I'm going to show you later on because this is of course Erika Kreipa's newscast. In news, uh, 50 people were uh, tested with the coronavirus yesterday, which is uh, significantly better than it was uh, last time when we met. Uh, then we were at uh, over 90 cases. Uh, we have had like from 80 to 90 cases, 90, highest 97, for a few days now, uh, even weeks. So. Uh, the feeling now is that what the, the, our top epidemiologist, Horole Gunnarsson, said is that uh, this is the week that we will see if we're getting any progress from the battle with COVID. But of course, uh, uh, it's a kind of a different pandemic than the last one. Uh, the reason is more or less because uh, uh, the, the first wave was more like uh, we were more aware of things. Uh, we were following the rules much more, much better uh, than we're doing now. And this means that uh, uh, the coronavirus has been like it has been spreading quite wildly, uh, which means that uh, we are uh, now in with 23 people at a hospital, which is a little bit better than this, this weekend because then we had we went up to 26. Uh, 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 but the thing is that the three are in at intensive care uh, and two are in ventilators. So it's, it's, we're not out of the woods yet. Also, like there are over 800 people that are in isolation. So it could prove to be, I mean, it could, could go bad still, but let's hope not, of course. Uh, doctors are worried that healthcare will not be able to care for all the people with COVID. They have done an excellent job, of course, so far, uh, because uh, from the beginning of the COVID uh, uh, pandemic, we have only lost two pe ten, 10 people. And it's, it's interesting because uh, we, we are now, what, uh, six or seven months into the, to the virus, uh, into the, this pandemic odd uh, era, uh, which means that uh, you, we can see a little bit better how countries have been handling things. So if you would take like Iceland and see how many have died from the coronavirus, 3,500 that contracted the virus, and we only have t 10 deaths. That is uh, around, uh, I don't remember how much it was, but it was like 0 0.23%, or like 0 0.237, percent uh, of the nation. So if you do the same like math with the UK, for example, uh, there we have like over 600,000 that have contracted the virus, and they have like uh, over thousands of tens of thousands of deaths. So uh, it would be if the, the same would have applied, like proportionally with the UK, we would have 1,700 deaths in the UK. Imagine, it's so, so much <laughs> less. Whoa, she's like really poly. <laughs> she's like, she's dragging me. <clears throat> but the thing is, if also, if we would do the same math for the US, uh, there would have, would have been 23,000 deaths uh, in total in, uh, in the, in the USA, if they would have followed the same uh, like method that the Icelandic uh, like, uh, police and, and hospitals have been doing, which is more or less uh, the people that have the COVID virus, they're immediately sent to uh, quarantine and everybody around them also go to quarantine. And this is how we try to like uh, get around the virus. So we, we quarantine and quarantine. We, we find everyone that was like around them. We have this app and so on. And this has been proven like incredibly 
uh, like uh, productive in so many ways. Which means that if in the US you would have the same death rate as in Iceland, you would have uh, around 23,000, which is of course nothing less than amazing numbers in some ways. Uh, but enough of that. Uh, there is an odd case that came up this uh, weekend. Uh, it's still in development, uh, and so I, I don't have like uh, all of the information about it. But uh, there was a car, like a camper, found burnt to the ground in the south of Iceland. Got it? Got it? <laughs> he's, yeah, like you see, he's not happy to be in this uh, in the lease, but I'm supposed to have a release here. Uh, anyways, uh, the thing is, the police found the camper the day after it burnt. Uh, and to their, to, to their surprise, they found a body in the campus. And there was a, a, a male, a human being, male, uh, in his 30s, late 30s. Uh, they don't know what happened, but what we know now is that there was an emergency call that came to like our 911 in Iceland, like Neyderlinan, emergency line. Uh, and, but it never got through to the, to the responders. So they're examining, uh, like investigating what, what went wrong there. Uh, but we have no idea if like uh, this was from natural causes, if anybody started the fire uh, or if it just like it was just an accident, whatever could have happened. But it's definitely uh, a story that is gripping Icelanders right now. And it's, it's an interesting one, of course. Uh, and then a little bit more about COVID. I don't know if you saw this in, in, in the news, but we have something called Great Barrington Declaration. Uh, this seems to be something like a, it's a, like a, you probably know this better than I do, but there is some some professor at uh, was it Harvard or Stanford or whatever. He started this. Uh, he wants he's encouraging like people, uh, nations to go not this heavily into the into the the measures like these lockdowns. Katagira. Uh, and this means that uh, like tens of thousands uh, of like doctors, uh, influential people in every country in the world, more or less, uh, have put their name on this list. And this list is like, it, it's, it, it's unclear what exactly they're, they're going for in this list, but they, it seems like they want like less uh, harsh restriction, like lockdowns and so on, uh, and, and like uh, protect the elders, which is more or less, I think, what uh, all governments are trying to do, more or less. Uh, but uh, uh, investigation conducted by the Byland Times have revealed that the great part of the declaration of website objecting to coronavirus social restrictions and, and, and purporting to have the backing of thousands of scientists, including numerous Icelanders, is sponsored by an institution that is part of Koch Network. This is, of course, like a very American thing. Uh, the Koch Network is something very Republican related and I don't know, people that do not like science or whatever. Uh, but the thing is, it became news in Iceland because a lot of Icelandic names were on this list. Among them was Sigmundur David Gunnlaugsson, the, the Panama Prince, like we call him in Icelandic. Uh, because uh, he, he, of course, was a prime minister in Iceland. He had to resign when he was in the Panama Papers. But when he was asked, actually, uh, why his name was on that list, he said, I have never heard about this. Uh, his name was there, but... Uh, he never wrote it himself. Uh, and when he was asked, like, would you ever like put your name on this list? He said, absolutely not. I mean, he, he said it was very unclear what is, uh, what they are demanding in this list. Like, are they demanding the, the Swedish way? He's not for that. Uh, or are they demanding something else? So he said that this needs to be more clear to, for him to, to ever put his name on it. Uh, incidentally, and even like almost hum humorously, uh, later on, they fo we found the name of Thorolu Gunnarsson, our own top epidemiologist. And he, of course, said uh, when he was asked about the list, he said it was absolutely incredible that uh, doctors and nurses and, and scientists were on this uh, same page that they wanted to, to go this way because he has been criticizing very heavily this idea about like about this, uh, uh, like this, this discussion about the sweetest way or some verses of it. He says that our healthcare does not, uh, is not able to, to take all the people in. And he said, like, if you're going for the herd immunity, that, then think, just think about it. Like, what will happen if 10% of the Icelandic nation would get sick, let's say, in a matter of weeks? 
is that like uh, we would probably have up to 200 deaths in, in a very short amount of time. So he, he said this is just, I mean, irresponsible. Can you show them a little bit, the, the rocks here art? We're now in a place called Almanagyao. Uh, this is like where the parliament was held. It was founded in 930 uh, and was held yearly for 870 years, making it the, the oldest working parliament in the history of uh, uh, the world. Of course, it's also on the UNESCO, uh, on the UNESCO list. Anyways, uh, enough of that. This, uh, yeah, oh, another name on this, on this list was Kári Stefansson, and he is like a hardcore lockdown guy. So this is, of course, these names were actually removed shortly after I uh, came into the media. But it shows that this list is, uh, uh, it's obviously not that very professional. Uh, uh, some people actually said that, yeah, the Icelanders, that they were on that list and they put their names on it. But all of the, those people are like in the, the like, in business uh, and like thinking more about money than people, I guess. Uh, also, uh, yeah, and a pet cat. I have to tell you about Gunnlaugur. A pet cat has returned home safe and sound as it going missing for months, for, for four months ago. Uh, and VC reported about it. Uh, Gunnlaugur is the name of the cat who lives near Hofsos. It's like, uh, it's like northeast uh, of Iceland, or northwest, northwest of Iceland, sorry. Uh, anyways, he, he, he went missing and was found last week, four months later, and he was, was like 50 kilometers away from uh, where he was uh, lost, where he lived. Uh, the thing is, uh, Gunnlaugur, he, he, he seems to have uh, like uh, hit, the, hit the right with a car. The thing it's, it's such a long distance, and not only that, he, he like he went over rivers and so on to get where he, he was going. But it, which is of course hilarious. And, and the cat Gunnlaugur, the owner said like, yeah, he's like a, he's a rascal definitely, but he, he didn't get any hurt or anything like that. He, he was fine when he came back, and he was a little fat when he when they lost him. But he, now he's like in a really good shape after all. So, I mean, this is how it is. Anyways, we're going, coming now to uh, like a very famous, notorious uh, lake. Not only did we have like a parliament here, uh, the Vikings had like uh, huge, like uh, they were had tents, uh, not only here, but on the other side here. But this is where they were like talking and debating and, and they were deciding uh, laws in Iceland and so on. But if you were uh, a murderer, thief, uh, or if you were a woman that had like a child out of that lock and so on, they were taken here and they were drowned. So this is like a very haunted place in some ways. This is where we killed them. We even had an executioner. Uh, we did this, uh, not here, like, but we did, we were like executing people until the, like, I think the, the last executions were like in the 16 and 1700s. And then we lay off these barbaric nonsense after that. You can also see perhaps, it's like, it's very, uh, very deep. So you can imagine like uh, in like one parliament, uh, perhaps there were like dozens of bodies floating around in this lake. And of course, like, I don't know, like, like most countries have done in their grim history throughout the years, we really love to drown women. Uh, it was a nasty business and it didn't matter like if they were raped or whatever. If they were, had a child out of wedlock, they were drowned. Simple as that. So, to another story, my last story actually. I love this place here. I think we can see it. It was in the news this weekend that we had uh, like lake trout uh, and they are swimming up here because of the spawn, they're, they're spawning in the lake. Uh, and there are like around 1600 fishes. It's around here. Yeah, you can see one here. You can see them on the top of the water even. Yeah. 
Yeah, there are like some of them like close to the to the to the river bank. And there you can see like dark uh, spots. So uh, these lake trout, they can be huge. They can be from like 24 up to 28 pounds. Uh, also, they think even they can be bigger, like up to there. There are stories of like story. There are like recorded lake trout that are up to like 30 pounds, but they don't come up here because they think they are like old and and in and fertile. Let's go here. Uh, this, of course, happens every year, and some like uh, people that are very enthusiastic about fish <laughs> say this is almost like the eighth wonder of the world. Uh, and it is quite impressive to see them. You can see them like in, in herds here. They're like, uh, they're, I they think they are like a, around 1600, uh, but just a half a century ago, there was almost none. So this, uh, they were almost wiped out. Uh, because of uh, there was a dam that uh, that uh, broke, and they almost like uh, yeah, were almost absolutely wiped out. But I have a better place for this. I'll show you from the bridge. I in. This place is also very important to Icelanders uh, for so many reasons, but this is one of the reasons. It's because uh, in the 1200s, I'm not sure about the, the year, I will not say the, <laughs> the wrong year, uh, Thorgeir Ljósvetninga Góði, he was like a, he was like a chief, uh, he decided that Icelanders should be Christian. Uh, he did this after he uh, thought about it uh, for uh, a few days under his skin, uh, and uh, he decided, because we weren't really Christian, we were more like concerned if there would be an invasion from the Norway or something like that, because Christianity was quite aggressive at the time. Uh, so we decided to like, uh, that we could be heathen, but we had to hide it. It was the most important thing. But himself, uh, Thorgeir, he also has like, there is a waterfall in the north of Iceland called Gólafoss. And he took all of his like, uh, what do you call it, like, Shrine, like uh, they, they did like this uh, wooden thing of the gods, and they th he threw it into the waterfall. And that's why, why it's called Gólafoss, because it's like the waterfall of the gods. That would be the English words. Uh, also, I have to show you one thing more. Come here, Art. We have two graves here of our two most like fantastic uh, poets that Iceland have ever had. One of them is Jonas Hallgrimsson, he's the one here, well, the stone at least. Uh, the other one is Einar Benediktsson, another fantastic poem. And these guys are more or less like, uh, could say they were like a huge part of the Icelandic soul. So if you want to understand the Iceland and Icelanders, uh, these are the two guys that you need to master. Did they? I'm going to cast a net out. Yeah, 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 but I'm going to roll over. I'm going to swim to the ground. Ah, it's just the altar now, it's another. I weigh that I'm going to hint it at now, and so I'm going to go to the bar and be free. No, I'm going to hint it. Yeah, 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 it's a hint. Jólans tekin, já, at least, stundum fæ ég ekki leifi, sko, en þetta er nóttur, sko. Þannig að það er þetta, svo kastu upp uganum. I can see, like, I can count up to, like, 15 or 16, and I see just here. This weekend there were even more, you could see it better. 
uh, like hundreds of Icelanders, they got the same idea, they said that it because it was such a good weather. And they all came here and there was even concerns that we were not like, uh, this was not safe because of COVID. But uh, we haven't heard about any, anyone that uh, contracted the virus at Ingvallir. <laughs> but, uh, but the kids saw it and it was absolutely unique. And it's like, it's very fun to see this. And so if you if you happen to be in Iceland in like in October, and like it's, it's it, this is around like four to six weeks, so you have you have quite the window to check it out. You can come to Thingvellir and see how the the lake trout. We called it Isaltar Isaltar Urriði. It's like a ice ice lake trout or something like that in English. Uh, you can come here and see it. Uh, yeah, but you can't fish them here. You have to go to the big lake there, you can fish them there. But it's not, not easy. Uh, I haven't caught many fishes here and I've been fishing here since I was a kid. <coughs> so, the status in whole is that uh, COVID uh, in Iceland, uh, this third wave, which is a nasty wave, is, is slowly going down, but we're not quite sure yet. We have a very strong restrictions we, all, we, have, we still have like 20 people gathering ban. We can't go to swim, <laughs> famously. Uh, and uh, there are like restrictions on, on a lot of things. A lot of coffee houses and restaurants are closed uh, because of this. Uh, people are working from home and this is disrupting very many lives. Uh, but, uh, but not everyone. I mean, the, the kids are still at school. It's still pretty normal when it comes to that. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's like, feels like we're getting a handle of it. But this is, this is the week that we will see if we're doing things right or not. But at the meanwhile, uh, we still have like beautiful nature. This autumn has been absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, like seeing these sea trout, uh, water trout, uh, lake trout, or so what are they called? Uh, to see them is absolutely wonderful. And especially for the kids, it was like uh, we took our kids last, last weekend and it was uh, unique to see this. It was so like, uh, it's like adventurous and just like peeking into another world. I love it. Also there's like uh, this place right now, it's like, you see like the beautiful color of the, of the, of the <laughs> leaves. Uh, and it's just, it is really like, it's a, it's a good day at the office, at least for me and Art. And of course, Polly. Uh, please remember, uh, of course, uh, we, uh, we were still doing the High Five Club uh, thing on our website, grapevine.is. We're up to 560 something, almost five, uh, 567. So uh, it would be fantastic if you could actually uh, subscribe, uh, like, uh, yeah, subscribe to that and help us. And perhaps we'll get into 600 before the end of the month, no, sorry, end of the week, because we really need it. It's that kind of, that time of the year, I guess. Also, our online shop, uh, we have a lot of new stuff. We have a fantastic t-shirt uh, made out of uh, our last uh, feature about Space Iceland. We actually did a feature about how Iceland have been involved in, in space uh, for 50 years, and it's quite a remarkable story. And of course, like and subscribe, use the bell button. That would also be a help a lot. Uh, and yeah, me and Polly and Art, we are gonna drink this beauty into us and just, yeah. So thank you, thank you for watching. Until next time. Kusir, hapa.